I'm using masking tape to block out the area that I want the promenade to be on. This is a completely dry oil painting and what I'm going to do is work on top of it with some spray paint and also some more oil. It's important to use a really sharp brand new, if possible, scalpel blade because the sharper it is the less likely you're going to cut right through the canvas. You won't have to put so much pressure, we're wanting to cut the masking tape only. We do not want to be putting holes into our painting. Just going into some detail around the puddles. I like the contrast between the cement, dark of the cement and the light of the water. Especially when it's the reflection of the sky. It just gives you a little bit more depth than everyone knows. Everyone who's been to Danoon knows that there's quite often puddles. But it does add a little bit of atmosphere to it. This view really, really reminds me of being a child and walking along the promenade into town. I like to use Montana Gold Spray Paint. It has all the different colours you need and the nozzles um, you can buy replacement because they do have a problem spray paint of getting blocked and even if you use turpentine or something to clean them they still just get a bit gunky so it's nice to have these spare nozzles that you can dip into some turps to clean them and then use a new one and swap between them. This puddle always makes me so happy to peel the masking tape off especially when it's a nice crisp finish you want to use quite a strong masking tape otherwise you'll get seepage the railings are another classic Danoon sight they're quite striking uh, this sort of cast iron strong railing silhouetted against this background and the scene it gives you a little bit more interest than just a seascape just the land in the in the background. I always like having something in the foreground, whether it's a rocky beach or the railings or a boat or just something else. Uh, with this painting, I have used a guideline to try again keep it with the perspective. I want it to look accurate. It doesn't need to be a photograph representation of the scene. I quite like leaving you some imagination that your brain has to fill in the gaps. I mentioned that in a previous video how paintings tend to actually, if you zoom in on them, you can look in and actually the markings are fairly abstract, but your brain pieces it together. So again, I don't want to put in too much of the detail. I just want your own inner eye and your own memory of what a scene might look like. It will fill in the gaps. Other thing I mentioned last video about using painting on top of a dry oil painting is this amazing ability to backspace delete. Just terps on a clean brush, clean cloth, wipe it out. You add something you don't like, wipe it out. You just go back to the beginning that you were on with the dry canvas. It is a wonderful freeing technique. You don't worry. You know that you can just go back and move those birds. I had it in the center. I didn't like it. Shift it to the side. Done. If you make uh, your brush a little bit too wet with terps a little bit too wet with paint and it causes a splodge and you're unhappy with that again you can just wipe it out blot it out this brightness is key for giving you atmosphere this three shades you've got your bright white you've got your neutral blues and then you have your black by having the three shades you give the depth you are not two-dimensional image it is an image that your imagination can walk into it's just a really nice simple technique to really liven up any artwork you've done pencil pastel anything i'm just going to go in now it's been a, a day i've dried it super quick used that uh, la queen original winter newton fabulous stuff just makes the drying time about 24 hours rather than two weeks meaning that I can go in now with masking tape. Wouldn't have worked on wet. It would have pulled up all the paint. I can just go in with masking tape, mask it off, and now do the contrast. Yesterday I did the white line, now I'm doing the black. These two right next to each other, really making the picture pop. A bit like the filter on your phone. You know, just adding that contrast just really gives you something extra in the painting. Makes it a little bit less lukewarm. You're dark, you're neutral, you're white. A little bit of a mark on my hand, wipe those off. 
now just the reflection of the lights. Now, you actually in daytime don't tend to see the lights on, but I feel again just for giving your eye what it wants to see. It wants to see reflection in the water, so I'm just giving it that. Just a small brush, a small wiggle, just hinting at the birds, hinting at the light reflection. We don't have to be too fussy, although I am working this bird a little bit too much. But again, it's showing you that you can just go in with your clean brush and your turps and just start over if you really dislike what it is you've been doing. Going in with the neutral again. So we've had our white, we've had our black. I'm just going in with sort of a, I'm in the middle, grayish blue. Just giving you this atmosphere of the sky. Unless it's a blue sky, you rarely get a solid color across it. Even in Scotland, even in the rainy days, the grays have shades to them. They have darkness and light. Just the final touches, dark, light, crisping it up. Just blending in points, which I feel are a little bit scrappy maybe. I like it abstract markings, but I don't like it scrappy markings. I want to keep it smooth. Silver linings on the clouds. Again, a dry, a soft brush, just to blend the edges. Keeping my paints to sort of this neutral palette. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of bluish gray. This last technique of adding the bluish gray over the water really makes it realistic makes it a entity that you could sail on that you could swim through it just sort of anchors it in the canvas neatening up dry soft brush just smoothing things out a little bit more of this medium blue gray just a little bit of surface the end Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, giving it a little thumbs up in the like box below would be really helpful. Any questions, happy to answer those. Leave me a comment and as always, subscribe to my page. That way you won't miss out when I upload my next video.